Type Maker case. It's a really easy to use user interface. It's all web based, it's a web interface, and lets you create really simple custom boxes. So if you've ever tried to design something like this in Illustrator, um, you'll find that designing these little finger tabs that hold the box together can be really complicated. And this website takes all of the guesswork out of it and does a lot of that math for you. So let's start. So you can see there are three different options here. The two that we'll probably use the most would be a basic box or a polygon box. I'm going to go through the steps needed to make a basic box. Um, and everything should pretty much translate. You know, once you get the basic box down, it should be pretty obvious how to make the polygon box or the curved bent box. So we'll start with the basic box here. Um, the window here, the website is split into two sides. I've got all of my uh, dimensions over here on the left, and I have a viewer window here in the middle of the screen that shows me in real time what my box actually looks like. You can rotate and pan, you can zoom. Um, if we look over here, the first thing we have to decide is the unit of measurement that we want to use. We can choose inches or millimeters. Um, we're going to stick with inches for now, but there may be cases where you'll want to use millimeters. For instance, if the wood that you're using is, um, if the wood or cardboard is um, a multiple of a millimeter, for instance, we have some wood that's three millimeters thick, we have cardboard that's two millimeters thick. It might make sense to work in millimeters, but I think um, you could just as easily work in inches. It's just a little bit more math that you have to do on the back end. So we'll stick with inches and let's build a box. So first we have to input our width. Let's put that at uh, six inches. And then our height, let's say that the box is two inches tall. And then our depth, let's go with um, Let's go with four inches. And now you can see this is what our box will look like. But we're not done. We have to determine if these are the interior or exterior dimensions. In other words, if you have something that's six by four inches and you want it like, like a card or a photograph and you want it to fit perfectly inside this box, then these measurements that you've typed in need to be the interior dimensions or your box is going to be a little bit smaller <coughs> or your box is going to be a little bit smaller than you want it to be because of the thickness of the wood. So we'll say that these are the interior dimensions. The next thing we want to do is input our material thickness. Um, they give you some standard sizes here, eighth inch, quarter inch. The three millimeter Baltic birch is right around an eighth of an inch, so we could select that if we're going to work from the Baltic birch. If you were going to use that thin cardboard that I was talking about, that two millimeter cardboard, you'd have to bring this down a little bit. You'd probably want to measure the cardboard with some calipers and get a custom size. And to do that, you just type in a number here uh, in inches. Now we have to decide if this is going to be an open or a closed box. Do we want it to be completely sealed or do we want it to have one open side? Right? <clears throat> and you'll see that by default it's going to open what it considers to be the top of the box. So if you want the, like the small panel, the 4 by 2 inch panel to be the open panel, then you're going to have to readjust your dimensions up here to make sure that it's opening on top. So if for instance, instead of typing in 6 by 2 by 4, you might type in uh, 2 by 4 by 6. And now you have the same box, but it, it's, um, it's considering the top to be uh, a different side than it was before. So it's a tall box instead of a wide box. <clears throat> the next thing we have to do is choose what kind of egg, edge joints we have. Um, you have two options. You have one for finger joints, like that. And then you also have T-slot joints, which we're not going to use. This requires a little bit of extra work. You have to create this uh, extra piece of hardware that, that you put glue on and slot in. So it's a stronger connection, uh, but it, it's, uh, it's a little bit more work. So we're going to skip that for now and just go with the finger joints. You do get to decide how long you want your finger joints um, 
See, we can drop this number down and we get many more, uh, many more finger joints per inch or we can bring it up and have fewer. I have noticed that sometimes you'll see render issues on the model. If I bring this down a little bit, you see that line that appears. You can pretty much just ignore that. That won't show up in the finished product. It's just a render issue on the preview window. So let's call that good. And now we're going to download our box plans. What we need to do is get these plans from this website into Illustrator. So if we click on download box plans, we have a few options here. You can see they're really nice and they give us those uh, what's, uh, what's the front, what's the left, what's the right, what's the back, the labels on the individual sides. Uh, I find for a box like this that's not really necessary and actually causes a little bit more work for us later on. Um, so you can leave it there for now if you and you can bring, the, bring this file into Illustrator with these words written on it, but I find it a little bit unnecessary. So I'm going to turn the labels off. The other thing we can do is uh, look at our line formatting. Um, so, some of so we're using a laser cutter to cut this out. Um, so some of these some of these options here are not going to apply to us. In fact, none of these options apply to us. So we're going to skip it for now, and we'll just talk about it in person later on. Um, but suffice it to say, a kerf. You see the word kerf here. A kerf refers to the width of the cut. So if you're cutting with a table saw, if you're cutting a piece of wood with a table saw, you have to think about, you have to take into account the fact that the blade, the table saw blade, is a sixteenth of an inch wide. So you're losing a sixteenth of an inch every time you make a cut. We don't really have to think about the kerf with the laser cutter. It's a very small amount that you're losing as the laser burns through the material. And in fact, uh, losing a little bit of material makes the boxes come together really easily. So we're not going to adjust for the kerf because, uh, well, we just don't need to with the laser cutter. So uh, we have two different download options. We can download as a DXF or we can download as an SVG. A DXF is, is uh, sort of an engineering format and we'll talk about DXFs later when we start using Fusion 360. But for now, we're going to download as an SVG because it's a file format that plays really well with Illustrator. I'm going to download that right now, and I'm going to go up and grab that and drag it over here to my desktop. Now in Illustrator, I'm going to create a new document. And I'm going to make the width 24 inches and the height 12 inches because that's the size of our laser cutter bed. So it's just convenient to work within uh, on an artboard that size. I'll leave it in inches for now. We'll hit create. And I want to go to File, Place, and grab that. So I have I actually have two. It made a copy because I've I've downloaded a couple of boxes to my desktop already. So the one that I want, the one that we just made is called box two copy. It added copy because there's more than one place. And now it's asking me where I want to drop this file. Um, and it's going to drop. Uh, so wherever I click will be the upper left hand corner. So if I click in the upper left hand corner of the screen, it will lay this out really nicely. So there's a few things that we want to do before we're ready to, to cut this out. We're very close, um, but what we want to do is ungroup everything. So right now, if I try to move one of these shapes, it's going to move all of them. And we don't really want that. We want to separate these so that we can move them around. So we'll just select these and go to Object Ungroup because we imported them all in at the same time they come grouped together. Uh, and I've noticed sometimes you have to do this twice. It, kind of doesn't take the first time and I've tried to figure out why that's the case and I can't so maybe if maybe you know more than I do and you can tell me why I sometimes have to go to object ungroup twice but the second time it, uh, it works and now these objects are separated so we want to save as much space in our laser cutter uh, or at least on our material as possible so we'll put this in the upper left hand corner and rather than leave this kicked out to the side where it was we'll rotate this 
We'll rotate this around and bring it down here. Now that'll just save a little material for us. When we're ready to actually send this to the laser cutter, we can change our stroke width. When I'm when I'm working, I like to work with a, a one point stroke width. I can see everything really clearly, um, and you, it's it's obvious if things are overlapping. But the laser cutter is not going to see these lines. You're not going to be able to cut with a with a one point stroke. What we need to do when we're actually ready to send this to the laser cutter is change this to a point zero zero one stroke, which is called a hairline. So now it's going to be really difficult to see on your screen, but the shapes are all still there. If I select them, they'll highlight blue so you can see that they're all still there. Um, but now the laser cutter can will read these as paths, as cut lines, and we'll cut that box out. So you'll see that because we decided to make an open top, some of these uh, shapes have flat edges on them. So you can see where this box is going to come together. This is the bottom of my box because it goes all the way, the, the teeth go all the way around. And then these are my sides because they have that flat top. And that should just about do it for this demonstration.